AI models like ChatGPT can do incredible things. But instead of worrying about it replacing you, why not put it to work? Let me show you how. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a superhero name generator using OpenAI's ChatGPT. But we won't stop there. We'll combine AI with the reliability of smart contracts and decentralized Oracle networks to bring that information back on chain. So we're gonna be creating a superhero name generator. And I know in the development space, naming things is probably one of the hardest things to do. So instead of worrying about that ourselves, let's make machines do it for us. You're gonna need three different things. First, you're going to need access to the Chainlink functions beta. This is what's gonna allow you to query that API and bring that data on chain. Next, you're gonna need the hard hat starter kit for functions. This will get you going and get you access to everything you need when it comes to setting up Chainlink functions for querying that API. And finally, we've talked about this API a lot, you're gonna need access to the API. So you'll need access to the OpenAI API. And you do have to create a paid account, but they'll give you free credits and it's a pay as you go. So let's get started. First, you're gonna need access to the Chainlink functions beta. If you head to functions.chain.link, you'll find this form and that'll get you access to the whitelist. Next, you'll need the Chainlink Functions Hard Hat Starter Kit. It's a fantastic tool for understanding functions. I highly recommend going through the readme to understand how functions work and to get a feel for this repo. You'll need to clone this repository and run npm install before we get going. And finally, you're gonna need access to the OpenAI API. If you're not familiar with it, if you head to platform.openai.com, you should see a page like this once you create an account. You'll need to go to Manage Account, and from here, set up billing, and set up a paid account. The other piece of information that you'll need from this website is an actual API key, and you can create a new API key, and it'll give you this one time secret. Copy this, you'll need it later. All right, you have everything set up and you're ready to go. It's time to dive into the starter kit. Now, if you haven't already interacted with the starter kit, it might be a really good idea to check out that readme file. I really recommend it. It'll walk you through setting up the environmental variables and understanding a little bit more about this repo. If you don't wanna do that and you wanna check out this video, I'll walk through the readme with you. Don't worry, I'll be here when you get back. All right, you made it back. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new value to our ENV file. Now, you know that ENV files are something you normally don't wanna share, so I'm gonna do it in the example. So we're gonna to need to add one more value. That's gonna be the API key from OpenAI. So we're gonna add that here and you can pass it in with what your value is. Give your ENV file a save, and then we can move on. The next thing we're gonna look at is the functions request config. So we'll head there now. Within this file, it sets up everything that functions needs to know about as far as configurations go. The first thing that we need to do is change a few things from the request config. The first of which is gonna be that file source. It's gonna be the source of the JavaScript that we'll be running in our function call. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to chat GPT request example. So this is a new file, it doesn't exist. We need to create it. Let's go ahead and do that now, just to make sure that we don't forget. So create a new file and we'll call it chat GPT request example.js. Give that a save and we'll come back here and change a few more things in our config. The next thing that we're gonna change are our secrets. Instead of using the coin market cap API key, we'll be changing it to the open AI API key that we just added to our ENV file. So we'll go ahead and do that here. We'll create a new secret OpenAI key. Next, we'll be changing the args that are passed in. Now, the args are gonna be the values that are passed in as an array. And in this case, we're gonna want that to contain our prompt for OpenAI. We're gonna be saying, hey, give me a superhero name on one line. And finally, the last thing that we need to change in this file is our expected return type. Instead of a uint256, it's gonna be a string. So with these changes complete, let's give this file a save and we'll be ready to move to the next step, which is actually editing that request example JavaScript file. All right, so this is gonna be that request. It's gonna be our plain vanilla JavaScript. And that is a key point. It has to be just plain vanilla JavaScript. No imports, nothing like that right now. So keep that in mind. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our prompt. We'll grab that from the args that are passed in. Next, we're gonna check and make sure that we have our API key for OpenAI. If we don't, we're gonna throw an error and we're gonna get out of here because without that, nothing's gonna work. Speaking of OpenAI, the next thing that we'll need to do is create our request. Now, this comes straight from the OpenAI documentation. There's a lot here. We have an example request and we also have an example response. Basically, our request is going to be a functions make HTTP request. We're gonna pass in the URL for that OpenAI API. It's gonna be a post. We're gonna pass in our 
key, our secrets.openai key. And then we're gonna do our request. So we have our data, we're using the specific model. We're passing in our prompt. Remember that's give me a superhero name in one line. We have a temperature. The higher the temperature, the more interesting and random the responses from OpenAI will be. So that'll give us a more random superhero name. And then max tokens just kind of limit the amount that we're spending on this. Once we get that response back, we're gonna go ahead and log it out. So we'll await that response. And then we'll go ahead and log the raw response as well as the actual choices from that data. So data.choices, that's going to be the actual information coming back from OpenAI. Within that, the next thing that we're gonna to need to get is to parse out the response into actual text. Now, we have our data.choices.text. That's gonna be the, the name of the superhero. I did notice that when it's returning it, I ask it for one line, but it's actually splitting it on three lines. So there's two new lines that I'm getting rid of with this replace. And then finally, sometimes it puts a period at the end. I didn't want that in my superhero name, so I added a replace the period with nothing and I'm trimming it just to make sure there's no extra white space around the edges and stuff like that. Perfect. So we've got this set up. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is we need to actually return this. So we'll use functions to encode this as a string. This way we can pass this into our smart contract. Cool. So let's go ahead and give this a save and see what it does. If we run npx hardhat functions dash simulate, it'll run it locally and we can see what the results are. So if we scroll up, we can see that it is logging out the messages from this code. So we can see our raw response here. This is gonna be the response from the API and all the JSON included. So we scroll down, we should be able to see our data and our choices, it's an object. So we log that again separately. So this is the response data and we can see the text is lightning bolt. You can see these two new lines and the period. That's what we're getting rid of. Then we log out just the name Lightning Bolt. So that's what will be passed in to our smart contract. So once we've got this working and we're getting that response back from OpenAI, now we need to change our smart contract. So we'll head on over to functionconsumer.soul. Now, now you can see it's working down here in the terminal based on the response, but I wanna do a little bit more with the text that's returned from OpenAI. So let's go ahead and edit this contract just a little bit so that we can do something a little bit more interesting with it. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna store that superhero name and I wanna create an event to be logged when the superhero name is changed. So we can do that here. So we'll add in a string for the latest name and we'll also add in a superhero name event. That'll take that string in. The next thing that we need to do is we need to change our fulfill request. So we have a few things in here. We have the execute request, which will create that request to the Oracle network. And then we have fulfill request, which is gonna get back the response. Within fulfill request, we wanna add in the last name update. We'll need to take our response and we'll need to convert it to a string. It comes in as a bytes. And finally, we need to emit our superhero name event. And that's it. Let's give this a save and we can run MPX hardhat function simulate one more time just to make sure that everything is working within our contract. And it looks like it is. So this time we got back quick flux. That's kind of a fun name. So the last step is to go ahead and deploy this contract to a network. I'm using Mumbai. So we'll go ahead and deploy this to the Mumbai network. I've chosen to verify. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. Once it's deployed, you can check it out on Polygon Scan. The next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to create a subscription for that contract. You'll take your contract address, paste it in, and you'll create that subscription for functions. And then once you have that subscription created, the next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to actually make your functions request. So let's go ahead and do that now. It'll run through a simulation and ask you if you want to continue. If you say yes, then you'll actually run this request on the functions network. All right, awesome, so we have Quantum Man. If we go and check out the actual contract itself, go to events, we should here, see here superhero name. And if we change this to text, we'll see we have this event emitted, Quantum Man. So that's it, you've done it. You've reached out to an AI to generate on-chain information. I think that's huge. I can't wait to see projects you build using this power. Now remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So Hulk smash that like button and I'll catch you in the next one.